Hello everybody and welcome to Evil Ted Live here on twitch.tv slash Evil Ted Smith. And when I say that, that actually means you guys watching this video on YouTube, this video is from my live streams. I do Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Times. And I also do them on Thursdays from noon to noon to 2 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, today's episode, we are sculpting, uh, as you guys can see uh, right, right there, is uh, there's the Vampire Hunter D. I built this costume. I'll be premiering him at Twitch. But the whole thing is he has a demon in his hand. And I'm going to go this old school. I'm going to sculpt the demon in his hand. Uh, as you guys can see in the picture here, before sculpting, I went and jumped online and got reference material. This is the, the, the pictures of the hands I'll be working from. And I always like when I'm working with something to get the images onto a hard stock and just have them in front of me when I'm working. So sometimes you have something on a computer image, you have to stop and kind of look at something. But when you have things printed out and put on a piece of cardboard and placed in front of you, it just makes it easier to sculpt and make reference to when you're sculpting. And a while back, I made a plaster cast of my hand. So I'm actually going to sculpt the, uh, the demon's face onto this hand. And we'll be using Roma clay today. So with my download images, I got my clay, let's get started. This is, we use a Roma clay. This is a, this is a medium, uh, the medium Roma clay. This is not super soft, but it's not really hard. So I'm going to, uh, I cut it in strips. So I like to do and kind of warm it up a little bit. I'm gonna to try to block out his a uh, little bit of his eyes here from there. All right, that looks pretty good. That looks close. I'm pretty happy with this. Now you guys can look at this. If you guys can see this, I'm sorry. Pretty close to you. Um, that this is the clay's there. It's pretty rough. This and my cup. I have, you, I have these brushes. These are little stiff bristle brushes. These aren't that stiff, but they're um, gonna be stiff enough. I'm going to uh, take some denatured alcohol, and the alcohol will help me smooth out the clay. So I'll try to stay close for you guys so you can see what's going on here. So I just get the brush, wet it up, and do this. I went ahead and got a stiff bristle brush. This is a lot stiffer, and this is kind of what I was trying to go for. So I can actually push a little bit harder on the, uh, the sculpture. There he is, look at that. Uh, got them all sculpted with the Roma clay. Did some fine detail work, and I ended up using lacquer thinner to uh, thin down the, uh, the clay. The clay is really hard, the alcohol kind of smoothed it a little bit, but not as much as I'd like it. It works really great when you're working with a softer clay. This clay is a little bit firmer, it's a medium. But the lacquer thinner just put enough of a slight sheen to it that I like. All right, there it is. Now, if you notice, there's a sheen to this, and that's because um, I went ahead and coated this with crystal clear spray, and um, it put a little bit of a skin coat on it, and also just kind of softened some of the detail again. Uh, I looked at it and just want to clean up the clay and make it a little bit softer. So I did about two clear coats of crystal clear. That's what the shine is. It's all dry now. It's perfect. Now, this is a stone hand. I'm gonna put stone, make a stone mold. So before I do all that, I realize that I've got to clay up all these areas so the plaster doesn't creep in here and get locked. So I have to basically kind of level a playing field right here. So I'm gonna clay this off. And today I'm going to use a bag of a water-based clay I have over here. This is, now, this is wet clay. This is what normally is a water-based clay that people sculpt with. I would recommend using a white clay. It's a really simple, easier clay to lay up and it's, it's a lot more inexpensive. But I didn't have white clay in my shop, but I did have a bag of white clay. It'll still work. It just Oh, by the way, yes, if people are noticing, uh, the thumb is missing. Yeah, I broke the thumb off. I realized for making the mold, the thumb is, was in my way and it wasn't necessary. So I just took a, a hacksaw and cut the thumb off. As you can see, I put this on a piece of cardboard and this makes it easier for me to move it around so when I clay things up. I have this brush I wet with water. I'm just gonna kinda go in here and try to clean off some of the excess clay on the stone. Get this all ready to go. You can see the stone, where the stone is. Granted, it, it's coated and it's kinda has no undercuts, but just for safety, I've got some uh, Vaseline petroleum jelly. I'm gonna take a really fine brush 
Got a little Vaseline on. I'm just going to just brush down the stone areas because you're putting stone to stone. And granted, this might be a bit of an overkill, but I just want to make sure that everything comes off. So I'm just going to come through with uh, some Vaseline. All right, I've looked at my, I don't need a lot of plaster. I just want my mold. My mold's not going to be so much uh, big as I want it to be thick. So I'm going to do like a, do a couple brush coats, let it thicken up and then kind of build up higher up on that. But how I like to mix my uh, plaster is I like to add the water to my bucket first. And I like to add the plaster to the water. I've got, um, now again, people say, what's the ratio and everything like this? I just am kind of doing it by eye because I've been doing this for so long. And I'm going to sprinkle my plaster into my water bucket. I think it was, was this is an old Dick Smith trick, a big makeup artist. You would just sprinkle the, your plaster into your uh, put a little bit of water. And you keep doing it till it looks like a dry lake bed, <laughs> you'd say. And mix, there we go. Oh, it's perfect. Nice creamy consistency. Perfect. This is the consistency I want. It's like nice and thick and creamy. Now I take a chip brush, which is what, that's what these are, and I'm going to start to just brush this stuff in. And I brush it to make sure I get all the details. And that's great. You see how the crystal clear is kind of resisting? That's great because that makes this all come out really easy. My mold. All right, that is my brush coat. And the plaster will continue to set. And as it keeps setting, you just keep adding plaster to it. I'm happy with the coat. I'm gonna, let's go a little wider here on my mold. Now, when you're laying plaster, make sure you don't touch what you've already laid down because what's going to happen is that once it starts to set up, you don't want to shift on there what it is so now i'm gently going to just be ladling plaster on top of the other plaster and not brushing it on i don't want to ruin the um the surface i put on there the plaster is getting a little thicker so i'm just going to uh kind of ladle it on top now we have the plaster on here it's also we're gonna let this set and this is where patience is a virtue you gotta have patience for this uh, I'm not going to touch this mold until tomorrow. I'm going to let this go ahead and set up, dry overnight, and with the heat, will be a lot, a lot faster. I'm going to let all the moisture kind of evaporate out of this uh, stone mold. The chemical reaction will get nice and hard, so I'm not going to uh, proceed to pull this off until tomorrow. All right, the plaster is on here. It's nice and dry. Now, again, this set over the weekend, but you can let this dry for at least like overnight or eight hours. It's nice and dry. As you can see, the water-based clay is just kind of falling off, which is fine for me. We'll go and reach under here and kind of pick it out. Um, hopefully, in theory, I shouldn't have to pull too hard to get this off. Um, I'm just going to try to lift on this with my hand to see how easy this comes off. I'm going to clear here. They push forward. It's a little bit of a deep. Let me push it up. There it goes. Ta-da! There it is. And it looks like very minimum air bubbles. This came out really nice. So now we have this, um, very gingerly. Uh, these edges of the stone are really sharp. So just for convenience, I'm going to uh, take a shear form and just kind of grind these edges down. And this is not so much, this is just for handling, so it's a little easier, so I don't cut myself on it. All right, go ahead and ground up the edges. This is all good. Now you can see, this is my negative. I'm gonna take a little brush here. We Clean all the loose stuff out of here. And I can already see some uh, chunks of clay. So that's one thing you have to do is you have to kind of go through here and clean this stuff out. I have some uh, high quality rubber latex. I'm gonna pour this into a cup. I don't need a lot because I'm, I'm gonna brush this stuff in. I'm gonna take this high quality pigment. I'm gonna just dab a little bit on this, uh, on my stick because it's super, I don't want to put too much in there. There you go, it's plenty. Now I get my color mixed up with my latex. For this particular technique, I'm gonna take a brush and I'm just going to uh, stipple a layer in the mold.
All right, this looks pretty good. You see the flesh color starting to show a little bit more. Um, let's go ahead and just do one more coat. The, these first two coats are dry. So I'm gonna do a third coat. Again, I'm gonna do it really thin. And we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna pull it after that. All right, I left this in the sun. This looks pretty dry. Um, now we have this latex. And one thing about fresh latex, it will stick to itself. So if I start to peel this up and it folds on itself, it will stick. So to prevent that, I have a little bit of baby powder and a brush, and I'm just going to brush this in. And this is just to prevent the, uh, the latex from sticking to itself. Now again, this is just three coats of latex, three thin coats of latex. Start peeling. So you know, starting to lift off. So since it's lifting off, I want to be very gentle. So I'm gonna, uh, same thing with the latex, it, it'll stick to itself. So I'm gonna apply powder on the actual uh, latex as I'm peeling it up. Ta-da! And there he is. Now, this is for my left hand, and this is where it'll sit. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I wanna glue this to my hand. I'll probably just get a glove and cut the fingers off and glue this to the glove and paint it. But. But there he is, he looks pretty cool. I'm very happy with him, he turned out great. Well, what we're gonna do is we're going to take this rubber face and glue this onto a rubber glove. I know you guys are thinking this is kind of big and crazy and yellow, but the reason I wanna use the glove, it's a little bit tougher, is that if I use it by disposable glove, I think it's gonna to be too thin, it's gonna tear, so I'm gonna do that. But in order to glue this on, I'm going to uh, stretch it onto this plaster cast hand. And again, I would not, did not think of this at first, but my friend Wicked West thought of this and suggested it, so I thought not a bad idea. So we're going to see if we can't stretch this glove on top of the plaster hand. All right. Now that we have the fingers off, let's put the glove on. I feel this will work a lot easier. Well, a little bit of finagling. I got this on here. Again, my biggest concern is that once I glue this on here, I might have an issue uh, taking this off. To glue this face down with this rubber glove, I have this uh, Pro's adhesive. It's a medical grade adhesive. I'm going to use this to tack the hand down. I'm going to go around and do both sides at the same time. I'm just going to uh, just to reinforce and kind of beef up the edges. I'm going to go back here with the. Uh... Well, this looks all nice and clear and dry. So let me get some baby powder. And I'm going to apply the powder on the uh, sticky parts. All right. Here we go. Hey, success. Ta-da. A hand, a demon in my hand. Um, I'm definitely going to do some blending on this a little bit more, but my next thing is I'm going to cut these fingers off. Ta-da! There he is, guys. That's so cool. I got my Vampire Hunter D demon in his hand. My mission was I wanted to have something that was uh, sculpted and make it, but I wanted to have it on a glove. The reason being because with makeup and a convention, glue it on, uh, would eventually would sweat and just fall off your hand. So I wanted to come up with a simple technique of having this on. I might end up trimming more off, the, maybe just even trim off the wrist of the glove, do some more trimming, but I have to kind of work on some way to paint this, but I'm sh pretty sure I'll figure it out. But anyway, this was so successful, everybody. And if you guys want to see this, I'll be wearing this bad boy at Twitch, at the Twitch convention, um, at TwitchCon. So if you guys want to, I'm going to be rocking the Vampire Hunter D costume. I'll be premiering at TwitchCon with my demon hand, wearing it as well. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, I do this on Twitch. There's a video from Twitch. I stream Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Times. And I stream on Thursdays from noon to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you guys are new watching, don't forget to go to my website, eviltedsmith.com. Get on my mailing list. Keep up to date on so what I'm doing next. And I have numerous patterns. If you're a newbie and you're new into cosplay and you want to learn more about cosplay building, I have tons of videos and I have really simple basic patterns to get you started and take the fear and intimidation out of building. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live. Bye everybody. Bye.